this episode, we have a Windows 10 computer and we have a Ruby on Rails application installed on this computer. Now we just have the repository pulled down. So now we want to see how we can use this repository and then start up our Rails application on a Windows computer. And to do this, we're going to use Docker. And Docker is simply a software container platform. And basically what that means is it'll run a subset of code within a isolated environment. And this could be very helpful on a Apple computer or even Linux if you need to support multiple versions of software. For example, if you have a legacy Rails application that is running a specific version of MySQL and it requires that version, then you're able to still support it while keeping a latest version elsewhere on your computer. And Docker is a great solution for this because you'll have isolated environments where MySQL will be running one version within its own container, and then you have a separate container with a completely separate version. And Docker Compose is a great tool for defining and running the multiple containers, and that's what we're going to be using today. So we do need to get started and go ahead and download Docker Compose on our computer here. And I'll post in the show notes a link to this Windows install, but we'll just install from the stable channel. And once it's finished downloading, you can run the install application and we'll just step through the process. You'll see that it'll prompt me a few different things and then I'll just let it go through its installation and then at the end I'll click finish. And you may notice that Docker will prompt you that the Hyper-V feature is not enabled and it'll automatically install it and restart your computer for you. And once your computer has been rebooted, you'll notice that the Docker is running on the bottom right of your screen. If you right click on Docker, then you can go to settings and then we can tweak some of the settings here. One of the things that we may want to tweak is the number of CPUs and the amount of memory that we allocate to Docker. And this is located under the advanced tab. So in my case, I'm gonna bump up the CPUs and because I have quite a bit of memory on this computer, I'm going to allocate a little bit more. However, keep in mind that when you do apply these settings, then if you notice in the task manager, it's actually going to eat up that much CPU whenever Docker is running. So this computer has 16 gigabytes and it's going to automatically take up eight gigabytes once it has finished loading. So now you see that 64% of my memory has been allocated. So you wanna make sure that if you don't need Docker running all the time, then you may wanna shut it down because it could affect your performance. Another thing that we'll enable is shared drives on the C drive. And we do this so we can access our Rails application and make changes within our Windows folder and then have this automatically available within the Docker instance. So I'll share out this C drive and I'll hit apply. And you may be prompted to enter your password for your user computer, enter in the password and then hit OK. And if everything works, then you should see Docker is running at the bottom. So I'll go ahead and close the settings and another nice feature about Docker is that we can download and install this Kitematic. And this will take me to a web page which automatically downloads the Kitematic. And this will give us a nice GUI interface to all the installed Docker instances, and then we can see if they are running or not. So we'll want to extract this folder to the C drive program files Docker, and then we'll want to give it the name Kitematic. So I'll create a new folder and just call this Kitematic. And it may prompt you for some security permissions. I'll just click continue through them. So if we close these windows now, we can then try to run Kitematic again. And then typically I'll just like skip for now when asking to connect to the Docker Hub. But if you want to use that feature where you can upload your own private images, then you're able to sign up and do that as well. So now on the right hand side, we can go over to my images and it'll show us all the installed images that we have. On the left hand side, it'll show us all the containers that we have installed and whether or not they are running. So let's have a look at this sample Rails application. You'll notice that in our gem file, I'm using the Redis Rails. And Redis is going to be a caching system that we use for this application. In the config database YAML file, you'll see that we are using MySQL 2. And then we have this set to template user and password for the password. And then we are connecting to our local host. So the first thing I want to do is set up the Docker file. And this Docker file will create our container image. So here we're going to use the base image Ruby and we are selecting Ruby 233. We can then call run and then call some bash commands. You'll see that the Ruby container is just a Ubuntu image or a Debian based. 
and we're just calling some updates and installs that we'll need for our Rails application. And if you are going to use MySQL, make sure that you install the libMySQL dev, or if you're using SQLite, then you can install the SQLite library. Then we'll install CoffeeScript and some other libraries. And then we get down to here where we create a directory under the root folder called Rails app. We expose our port 3000 and we change our directory or say our working directory is at Rails app. We then add our gem file to the Rails apps gem file. And then we add our lock file to that same folder. We run bundle and then we copy over our application. So now I'm going to launch an instance of the git shell and this will launch a PowerShell and then I can change directory into my Rails application. I can then call docker build period for this folder and then I can give this docker image a name with the dash T and then I'm just going to call this my Rails app. And this will download the Ruby image from docker and then it'll run a bundle as well as run all the scripts that we had set up in our docker file. And once everything is finished, we'll be returned to our prompt. If we go back to Kitematic, you'll now see that we have a new Ruby image. Then back in our Rails application, we can create this Docker Compose YAML file. And this YAML file will have two main keys. One is the version, and this is by default set to two. And then we have services. And the services will be each one of the different containers that we want to create. So we'll want to create an instance of our web application. We'll want to run Redis. MySQL, and then also PHP MyAdmin so we can access our MySQL instance. So if we start with Redis, we say that we want the image to use the Redis image, and then we have ports which passes in a list, and we want to map our localhost port 6379 to the port of our container to 6379. And the nice thing about this is that Docker manages its own private network. So we can call Redis, and this will reference to the Redis container that we are running. So in our config environments development, we can change from our local host to Redis, and it'll automatically pick this up. And then again, we have our port 6379. And then if we look at our MySQL container, you'll see that we're running the image MySQL and the version 5.7. And the command, you can pass in separate commands. For example, with the MySQL D, we're passing in the option, the character set server to UTF-8. And then again, we have our ports, mapping the local port to the container port. Restart always is a option that we can pass as well. And then we get to this volumes, which the volumes will be enabled because we have our C drive shared. And then we're saying in the previous directory, so not in our intro to Docker folder, but the one up above, we can create a Docker folder. And then within there, the MySQL folder, and this will map to the var lib MySQL. And this is a great way to persist between your application so that the files of MySQL will be stored locally on the computer. And then you can pass environment variables like the MySQL root password, the database, user, and then the password. And then our PHP MyAdmin, we're using the PHP MyAdmin image. And in this case, we're passing in port 8080 of our local machine to the port 80 of the PHP MyAdmin container. And here we're calling depends on MySQL. And we set this because we want to make sure that the MySQL instance is running prior to launching the PHP MyAdmin. And then finally, we go to our web service. And in this case, we're calling build on the current directory, and that'll reference to the Docker file that we have. We then have a command, and you can patch in bash C, so you can use ampersands if you need to string in multiple commands. For example, like creating the database, migrating and seeding it, and again, our volumes, we say our current directory, we want to map to the directory Rails app on our container. And this will allow us to make changes within our application on the Windows side and have it automatically update and effect on the server side, or rather in our Docker container. And again, we say that this depends on Redis and MySQL. And then back in our shell, we can call Docker Compose and then up and this will automatically start up and install all of the different instances that we have set up in our Docker Compose file. And once everything has started up, you can access your Rails application on your localhost port 3000. So now on our localhost 3000, we can then test out our application. And you'll see that it successfully writes to our database. We can edit records and then update them. And back in our shell, we can hit Control-C 
to stop the application, and you'll see that it's stopping them. If we go back to our Kitematic and we close it, I do find that we have to close it and open it again sometimes to get it to refresh. So here I've closed it. I'll right click on the Docker icon again and then select Kitematic. And then now you see our four instances that are all stopped. And we can call Docker Compose Start. And this will start in the background each one of the containers. And you'll see on the right hand side, it's now started each one of those containers. If you want to stop a single one, then you can call Docker Compose Stop and then select the name of the service. In our case, if we want to stop web, then we can call Docker Compose Stop Web, and this will only stop the web instance. And then on the right hand side, you'll see that it has stopped that instance. And another nice thing about using Docker on Windows is that we can make changes to our application, save the files, and then refresh on the Docker web page, and then we'll see the picked up changes. And again, if you do make a change to your configuration file, you will need to restart the Rails application. Well, that's all for this episode. Thank you for watching. For more videos, check out driftandruby.com.